Now back to our top story. Lawmakers considering the fate of former IRS official. Lerner, the House could vote today on whether to hold her in contempt of Congress. Republican Congressman Thomas Massey of Kentucky is a member of the House Oversight Committee and my guest today. Congressman, great to see you. So uh, if we were inside Thanks, these man. discussions that you've been having today between Republicans and Democrats in the House, how have they been going? Um, they're very contentious, I will say that. <laughs> I, I was sort of asking that ton in cheek because uh, just looking at some of the quotes that are coming out from the meetings, one Democrat said, welcome to witch hunt week in the House of Representatives. Yeah, and so um, are they talking about Benghazi or are they talking about the IRS? Um, <laughs> you know, we have a lot of stuff in front of us. You know. Uh, and um, which one do you want to talk about? Well, yeah, well, since we do have these two scandals that you are juxtaposing at the same time, let's start with the IRS because that one is imminent today. The vote's, right. the vote's going to happen. I assume it's going to be right. on party lines? I think it will be on party lines. Look, part of the story that needs to be told that I think is left out of this is, is the information we have on Lois Lerner. The things she said publicly in 2010. If we could just go back for a few seconds to 2010 and relive that moment. Citizens United ruling had just come from the Supreme Court. The senators, the Democrat senators, were pounding the IRS, asking them to do something about conservative organizations. The president himself was. And Lois Lerner publicly spoke. And she said, the FEC can't do anything about these conservative organizations. They're all screaming at us. They want the IRS to do something. They're telling us, can't you see how much money they're spending? And they want us to stop it before the elections. And th those were her public words. Right. Now, she's, she took this as her mission. I mean, you, what you have to understand about Lois Lerner, all roads lead to her and through her. She was the mastermind behind this. Now, she, was she being directed? Sure, she was being directed. But well, she's the one that, that, that really initiated this mission. That's the big question, though, is it not, Congressman? I mean, don't, isn't the heart of this matter really to find out if she was, in fact, directed from somebody else? Absolutely. I mean, clearly there was coordination. At first, she tried to throw the, quote, low-level workers in Cincinnati under the bus when she got a heads up that an inspector general report was going to come out that wasn't favorable for her. Yeah. But now that narrative has changed. From the few emails we've been to, able to obtain, and by the way, the IRS commissioner has refused to give us the emails in our oversight committee. He told us a few weeks ago it would take him two years to get us all of her emails. I remember that. Uh, it's, it's interesting when a subpoena suddenly comes or Judicial Watch or an organization yeah. like that enters into the fray. They somehow get these emails at least within a certain amount of time. I got to get your thoughts right. on the special panel on Benghazi because it's starting to take shape right. now. The House Rules Committee meeting just sitting down now. This is a live look right now. And they're going to be talking and prepping this resolution that will actually create this select committee. But earlier today, top Dems hinted they may not want no part of it now. They're ratcheting up a partisanship. This is not the time. The House Republicans are now focused on the creation of a new select committee. Uh, it, to me, it's just outrageous. It looks like Republicans are more concerned about an email than they are about the four Americans who lost their lives. There are four committees that are investigating Benghazi. I see no reason to break up all the work that's been done and to take months and months and months to create some select committee. So what's going to happen here, Congressman? Because yesterday it seemed as if Nancy Pelosi wanted Democrats in an equal fashion to be on this committee, but it seems now like they're balking. You know what? That partisanship may sell in D.C., but that's not going to sell back in their districts. I, you know, the people they represent want to get to the truth. It doesn't matter. Democrats or Republicans, and they're throwing out red herrings to, to obfuscate and to stop this investigation. They've said that, oh, we can't spend the money. Well, listen, all the money is going to come out of existing House accounts. This won't cost the taxpayers an extra dime. They're saying, oh, we don't have enough seats on the committee. Listen, I've sat in oversight hearings where there are empty Democrat seats, where they don't even show up to ask the questions to get to the ah, truth. So it's not clear if they had more seats that they would do any more. Okay. So these are all red herrings. Um, this committee, this needs to happen. Well, it'll be interesting to see if it ends up being a 12 members of Republicans and Democrats or only Republicans. Congressman, thanks for your time. Thank you.